Hey everyone, this is Nicole from KenHub and welcome to our tutorial on the arteries of the brain as seen from a basal view. You may notice that the vascular anatomy of the brain is beautifully complex, but that doesn't mean it should be difficult to learn. The vascular anatomy of the brain has been a subject of study since late antiquity, with centuries of research leading to scarce results mainly because most anatomists would choose to study the vasculature of the brain from a difficult perspective. It wasn't until the late 17th century that a British physician named Thomas Willis decided to study the base of the brain, preparing specimens in a manner that would leave the base of the brain intact. By doing this, Willis was able to identify a pattern in this vascular complexity, and this same pattern is what we will be discussing in the rest of our tutorial. As we discuss the arteries of the brain, we'll be discussing them as seen from the basal view of the brain, which is basically the bottom or the underside of the brain. We'll break down the arteries that supply the brain into two circulations, according to which part of the brain these arteries supply, namely the arteries of the anterior circulation, which supply the anterior part of the brain, and these include the internal carotid artery, the posterior communicating artery, the anterior choroidal artery, the anterior communicating artery, the middle frontobasal artery, and the lateral frontobasal artery, and the arteries of the posterior circulation, which, as you may already have guessed, supply the posterior part of the brain. And these include the vertebral arteries, the anterior spinal artery, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, the basilar artery, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, the labyrinthine artery, the pontine artery, the superior cerebellar artery, and the posterior cerebellar artery. We'll also look at the anastomotic connection between these two circulations, known as the circle of Willis. So let's begin. As you can see, the arterial vasculature is highlighted in two different colours, and that's because Willis managed to break it down into two simpler circulations, namely the anterior circulation, which you can see highlighted in pink, and the posterior circulation, which you can see highlighted in blue. The main difference between these two circulations is their origins. So if we look at the anterior circulation, we'll see that it arises from the internal carotid arteries in the front, while the posterior circulation arises from the vertebral arteries. The two circulations ultimately anastomose, forming a circle around the hypothalamus and optic nerve at the base of the brain, and this circle came to be known as the Circle of Willis, honouring the contributions of Thomas Willis to the vascular anatomy of the brain. So now let's take a closer look at each of these circulations. So here we can see the internal carotid arteries highlighted in green, and the internal carotid artery arises in the neck at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. It gives off no branches in the neck, enters the skull through the carotid canal, and emerges in the cranial cavity after a torturous course in the carotid canal. In this illustration, most of the intracranial portion of the internal carotid artery is removed, except for the part which serves as an origin point for the anterior circulation. The internal carotid artery gives off two branches which constitute the anterior circulation, a smaller branch for the brain parenchyma, and an anastomosing branch to communicate with the posterior circulation. And the two major branches are the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.